in Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to go and read, and we're going to start in verse 11. Um, This is a, a, a scripture that we've been reading over the last few weeks as we are in this series entitled, You Choose, You Choose. Moses here speaking to God's people, he says this, This command I am giving you today is not too difficult for you, and it is not beyond your reach. Now listen, today I am giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in them. If you do this, you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you and the land that you are about to enter and occupy. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. You see, life is made up of a series of choices. Some choices are big, some choices are small, but all of our choices are vitally important. They're so important that Moses actually says the choices that we make, they are the key to our life. I love what John Maxwell says. He says, life is a matter of choices and every choice you make makes you. Come on, isn't that just spot on? Every choice you make is actually making you. And so that's why we're talking about choices. And the last few weeks, we've talked about some of the choices that we need to be making. And in week one of this series, we talked about how you need to choose faith over fear, how you need to choose peace over panic, how you you need to choose helpfulness over hopelessness. Last week, we said, you gotta make a choice and you gotta choose to stay loyal. You gotta choose to speak life and you gotta choose to shine light. These are choices that we need to make, not just one moment, we need to make every single day. And today we're gonna talk about choose to be an example. Choose to be an example. During this time, we need to make this choice to be an example. An example. It it comes from 1 Timothy chapter 4, where uh, the Apostle Paul, a leader in the early church, is writing to his spiritual son, Timothy, a spiritual mentor and and, uh, mentee. And this is what he says He says, Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith and your purity. Be an example. Maybe we would say an example of what? Be an example of what? Be an example of who God is on the earth, representing God well on the earth. You see, whenever we say the word Christian, uh, many times here at North Point, we say, we, we talk about being a follower of Christ or a Christ follower, but, but that suffix, that uh, at the end of Christ in, I-A-N, that, that suffix, suffix, it actually means to belong to, to relate to, or like. To belong to, relating to, or like. And doesn't that speak to exactly who we are? We belong to Christ. We belong to him because we are now in relationship with him. We are relating to him because because he is not just our Lord and our Savior. Now we are children of God, which that means that that we are brothers and sisters with Christ. We, We are related to him. We are connected with him. We belong to Christ. And listen, not only that, we should be like Christ. We should live our lives like Christ. Now, 
this is where people really start crawfishing. They get so nervous and they start saying, but, but, but wait, wait a minute. I can't because they feel like there is no way that I could ever live up to that standard. Okay, exactly, exactly. God knew that we couldn't do it on our own. He knew that we couldn't do it out of our willpower. We couldn't do it out of our own strength. We couldn't do it out of our own knowledge and wisdom. So this is what God did. Knowing that we would never be able to represent him well on this earth, he sent his own spirit to live and dwell on the inside of us. And Jesus speaks about this in John chapter 14. And he says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. Come on, can you just sit back right now, take a deep breath? Whew, that is good news. The Holy Spirit is not going to leave you when times get tough. The Holy Spirit is not going to leave you when you make a mistake. No, Jesus says the Holy Spirit will never leave you. This advocate that he is giving you is going to always be with you. Verse 17, he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Jesus talking to his disciples and he says, he says, you, you know the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has been with you. What was Jesus talking about? Jesus was saying the Holy Spirit has been living and operating on the inside of me. The Holy Spirit has been with you, but not, but in the future, he's not just going to be with you because Jesus told his disciples, I'm going away, but I'm going to ask the Father. The Father's going to send the advocate. He's going to send the Holy Spirit. And when he sends the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not just going to be with you. The Holy Spirit is going to be on the inside of you. Now, this word that we read a moment ago in the New Living Translation, it chooses to, to use the word advocate. But when you look at the, the Greek word uh, there, it actually, uh, the Greek word is actually paraclete. And it is so complex, so many branches off of this word. It, it, sure, it means advocate, but it also means encourager, comforter, counselor, helper, aid, assistant. Now, I don't know about you, but I know I need all of those things in my life. I need encouragement. I need comfort. I need wise counsel. And I need help. Destiny, don't say amen to that too loud right now, okay? I need help. I need, I need an assistant. I need aid. I need help. And that's what God sent the Holy Spirit to do for me. God knew that we needed these things on the inside of us. So God sent his spirit to live there. In John chapter 16, Jesus says this. He says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. You see, the Holy Spirit is a guide. The Holy Spirit is a guide. The Holy Spirit will guide you, but not only will the Holy Spirit guide you, the Holy Spirit will also speak to you. Have you ever been on like a guided tour? Maybe you're on like a bus going through a city or maybe you were in some uh, natural, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 what's the things called, a nature park. I don't even know. You, you obviously, you can tell I've never been there. But, you know, for the people that love the outdoors and they take these guided tours and now the tour guide is always there. You know, they said, you know, on the microphone, hey, uh, in 1832, right down here in this valley. And I want you to see how the Holy Spirit is your tour guide through life. The Holy Spirit is there with you. Now, let's think for just a moment. What does a tour guide do? What does a tour guide do? A tour guide knows something you don't know about where you are. And the tour guide is there to tell you about what you don't know. 
How much is that like the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is there to tell you about where you are and to tell you about the things that you don't know. But the Holy Spirit takes it a step further, not just telling you about where you are. The Holy Spirit comes in also to tell you about who you are. Because you see, as we go through life, we pick up all of these labels and these identities that come from places. They can come from your mom, your dad, a teacher, a coach. They can come from an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend or an ex-spouse. And we put these labels on us and all those labels are lies. All of those identities are not who God created us to be. And we wear these labels and the Holy Spirit comes and says, no, I wanna be a guide for you. Listen to what I am telling you about who you are. Are. You are loved. You are adored. You are more than a conqueror. You are a child of God. You have a seat at God's table. You are blessed. This is what the Holy Spirit begins to speak over our lives. So the Holy Spirit is our tour guide, not just telling us where we are, but telling us about who we are. What else does a tour guide do? A, a tour guide knows how to get you from where you are to where you need to be. How much does that sound like the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit knows where you are and the Holy Spirit knows where you need to be. And not only does the Holy Spirit know where you are and know where you need to be, the Holy Spirit knows how to get you there. You see, the Holy Spirit is your tour guide guiding you and leading you and speaking to you about who you are and about where you are going and how you are going to arrive at that destination. But what does this all come down to? This all comes down to a choice. That's right. It all comes down to a choice. I must choose to follow and listen to the advocate that is in me. I have to choose and listen to the Holy Spirit that is dwelling on the inside of me. Now, one of our favorite scriptures here at North Point that we uh, say often is Romans 12, verse two. It says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You see, God wants to transform your life. God wants to change you, and he has a plan to do that. His plan was to give you the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit could help you to begin to think differently, to think differently about God, to think differently about your life, to think differently about your identity and yourself, to think differently about your past, your present, and your future. The Holy Spirit is there to help you think differently, but at the end of the day, you still must choose to let the Holy Spirit be your guide. You have to choose to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Now, we're gonna get into five areas that the Apostle Paul told Timothy that he should be an example. But before we get into those five areas, we need to know that we cannot be an example in these five areas until we first make the choice to let the Holy Spirit be the Holy Spirit in our lives, to let the Holy Spirit be our tour guide, the one who is guiding us and speaking to us about where we are, who we are, where we are going, and how we are going to get there. But after we make that choice to let the Holy Spirit guide us and speak to us, then we can move into these five areas. And real quickly, let me just hit these for you today. These are five areas that you can choose to be an example in. Number one, you can be an example in what you say. You can be an example in what you say. Let me just ask you a quick question. How are you talking about our current situation? How are you talking about COVID-19? How are you talking about the decisions that are being made by government officials? How, how are you talking about what is happening in our world right now? How are you talking about that in front of your kids? How are you talking about that with your friends? How are you talking about that on social media? Are you being an example? Maybe I could say this even clearer. Are you representing God well in what you are saying? Are you being an example 
in what you say. You say, but, but Phil, are you trying to tell me just to live in denial and act like everything is just hunky-dory and peaches and cream? No, 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 not at all. I'm not asking you to live in denial, to, to not live in the truth about the facts and the challenges that we are facing right now. But what this does look like is it looks like believing that God is who he says he is and God can do what he says he can do. And God says that he can bring the good even out of the bad, and so I put my faith, hope, and trust in him, and I speak in that direction. You see, Ephesians chapter four, verse 29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it might benefit those who listen. Let your words be good right now. Let your words be helpful right now. Let your words be full of grace and let your words be full of faith. Make sure that your words are building people up and that they are beneficial to those who are hearing them. Listen to me. You don't have to join in every group chat. You don't have to give your opinion every single time that somebody else gives their opinion. No, you can make a choice. You can can choose what to say and you can choose when to say it. And I encourage you, be an example right now in what you say. Here's the second thing that Paul says, we can be an example in the way we live. We can be an example in the way we live. We don't have to allow our response to be characterized by fear, by panic, by doubt, and by selfishness. I I know that you've lived long enough to see this pattern that exists in our world, this pattern of being ungrateful, this pattern of being selfish, only thinking about yourself and, and this pattern of, of self-pity and being a victim and nothing ever being good enough. We, we can see this pattern in our world, but guess what? We can choose to live differently. Just because that's the behavior of the world doesn't mean that that has to be our behavior. No, as followers of Christ, we can choose to live differently. We can choose to live grateful. You can wake up every morning and tell God how grateful you are for that day. You can spend time throughout the day thanking God for all that he has done and is doing in your life. You can let other people know how much you appreciate them and thank them for all that they are currently doing for you as well. You see, it's true. Gratitude does change your attitude. So let's make sure that we choose to live grateful. But not only just living grateful, you can also live generous. You see, so many people are just living for me, myself, and I, but not us. We can choose to live generous. I want to live with the realization that the one who created the heavens and the earth can give me everything that I need as I help others get what they need. You see, I don't live with a limitation mentality. I don't live with a lack mentality. No, I believe I serve a God of abundance. I serve a generous God who's asked me to be generous with those around me. So as I give out to others, I believe God will put in my hand those things that I need today. So we can choose to live grateful. We can choose to live generous. But you know what else we can choose? We can choose to live gritty. You can choose to live gritty. We have a house habit here at North Point Community Church that says we live on. We live on through adversity. We live on through difficulty. We live on through the tough times and challenging seasons of life. We keep getting up. We keep showing up. We keep growing up. And we keep going up. Why? Because we want to be an example in how we live Here's the third thing that Paul said you can be an example in. And he says, you can be an example in your love. Jesus told us in John chapter 13. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. 
You see, as Christ followers, we should lead the world in love. We should be the leaders when it comes to love. Why? Because 1 John tells us that God is love. So how can we represent God well? How can we be God-like here on the earth if we are not living in love because that is who God is? God is love. So we need to love our family members. We need to love our neighbors. We need to love everyone the way that Jesus Christ has loved us. And as we love people that way, the world will take notice. They will see that we are living differently and they will see that we belong to God because of the way we love each other. Here's the fourth thing that Paul said. You can set an example in your faith. You can set an example in your faith. You see, faith is not just something that you talk about. Faith is something we got to be about. It's not just something that we talk about. Faith is something we got to be about. Action is required with our faith. James chapter 2, verse 26, it says, just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. You should be able to see faith in your life. You should be able to see faith because it's coming out of your life in good works. You see, we're not just speaking faith. We should also be seeing faith. Yes, it's important that I speak faith, but I don't want to just be a faith speaker. I also want to be a faith seer. I want to see my faith in action, producing good works in my life. You see, we should talk about what God can do, but then we should also be busy being a part of doing it. We should talk about what God can do, but we should also be a part of doing it. We should be a part of bringing heaven to earth and being an example of faith. Now, here's the last thing that Paul says. He says that we can also be an example in our purity. During this time, let's keep our hearts pure. Let, let's don't allow anger and resentment and division to creep into our hearts. I love what, what Destiny has been saying uh, over this past week. She keeps saying, be patient with me. This is my first plague. And I think that's important that we remember that we would be patient with ourselves and we would be patient with one another. In Ephesians chapter four, verse 31, the scripture says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. You see, we need to set the example in the purity of our hearts. Right now, there are so many things swirling out there in the news and on social media and in conversations. But listen, you don't have to allow what is around you to get in you. No, you can choose to keep your heart pure during this season. And if we choose these five things, if we choose to, to be an example in how we talk, we choose to be an example in how we live, we choose to be an example in love and in faith and in purity, all of these things will have started because we decided, we made a choice to allow the Holy Spirit to be our guide through this season. We said, Holy Spirit, speak to me every day. I am listening to what you are saying because I want to represent God well in what I say. I want to represent God well in how I live. I want to represent God well in how I love. I want to represent God well in my faith and in my purity. I want to represent God well. And so we make a choice to let the Holy Spirit be our tour guide to navigate us through these uncharted waters, if you would, right now. You see, the world does not need any more fear, any more anxiety, any more despair, negativity, doubt, arrogance, or selfishness. But you know what this world does need? This world needs you. 
and it needs you to be an example. This world needs you, you allowing yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit, you allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you during this time so that you can lead well in these five areas so that you can be an example. That's what the world needs right now. The world needs you. Can we pray? Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much that in moments like this, you are closer to us than ever before. God, thank you that you hear our prayer right now. God, thank you that there is no request too small that you don't care about and there's no request that we make that's too big that you can't do something about. And God, we all have so many needs that we are lifting to you up, uh, lifting to you during this time. And God, we trust you that you hear us and we trust you that you are moving on our behalf. Right now, God, we just come before you and we say we wanna make the choice We want to make the choice to allow the advocate, the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, and to speak to us during this time. And right now we say, Philip, that's the choice I want to make today. I want to make that choice. Before I choose to be an example in these five areas, I first need to make that choice. I choose for the Holy Spirit to be my tour guide, to guide me and to speak to me. If that's you right now, Come on, right there where you are. You can just lift your hand to God and say, God, that's me right now. God, that's me. I I hear what you're saying. I want the Holy Spirit to be the Holy Spirit and do what the Holy Spirit was intended to do, to lead me and to speak to me. Right now, as you put your hands down, you say, Philip, I want to be an example. I want to be an example. I want to make the choice to be an example in what I say and how I live in my love, in my faith, and in my purity. I wanna be an example to my family. I wanna be an example to my friends. I wanna be an example to my coworkers. I want to be an example to my world right now. I wanna be an example in these five areas. Come on, if that's you, just lift up your hand right now. It's just a sign to God right there in your living room, in your bedroom, sitting at your kitchen table as a sign to God to say, God, I hear what you are speaking to me and I am responding and saying, yes, God, I choose to be an example. Now, Father, I just pray for all of those right now that made this decision. They made this choice. God, may we continue to make this choice every day to let the Holy Spirit lead us and speak to us, to allow the Holy Spirit to create in us a new thought patterns, create in us a new heart, create in us new activity that would allow us to be an example in these five areas. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, why don't you go ahead and put a big amen on that. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. I know we can't be in the room together, but listen, we are meeting bigger than ever before as we are meeting in in, in houses and in places all over this city and all over the United States and even around the world as people are tuning in and watching. Thank you for joining us. Make sure during this time you stay connected, lean in, don't lead out. Let's grow together so that we can go to the next level together. We'll see you soon.